In today's tip, we're going to talk about a new feature in Creo 5.0, topology optimization. Topology optimization has been around for about 20 years, but typically as a standalone solution. The reason we're talking about it here today is because PTC has embedded a solution from VR&D directly into their flagship CAD product. Let's take a look as Todd Kraft shows us the ins and outs of this new solution. Today's topic is going to be topology optimization. This is part of Creo 5.0. This is a brand new partnership that PTC has with a company called VR&D, Vanderplatz Research and Development. And topology optimization has been around for many years, uh, over 20 years. And there's been a few partners that have worked with PTC in the past. And what PTC has done now is embedded this technology from VR&D right inside of Creo 5.0. So, Check it out, there's some videos here from VR&D, there's also some videos on YouTube, and also, inside the PTC Help, there's an excellent section on topology optimization that you can see in Creo 5. It goes through all the setup, all the, the bells and whistles that, that topology optimization offers, and also under additional infra resources, there's a, a design manual from VR and D, 880 plus pages here, and you can really see everything that's happening in in this te technology. Okay, so um, that's for your reading if you wish to. But let's just kind of show you how it how it works. This is a simple little uh, clutch shoe example. It goes from a model like this to a model like this that's been optimized. Now the key thing that Creo 5 does is it will not just optimize the geometry for you, but it will semi-automatically reconstruct the geometry. Notice what happens is it creates the faceted model. If we go ahead and just kind of drag this up like this. Here's the facets like this. But then what happens is it, it, it will go ahead and convert those facets into a freestyle feature. And then you end up with smooth geometry that you can then take and, and run with. So let's go ahead and show you how this works with a different model. This is a little block here with a couple of holes on the top and a hole on the bottom. And to get to topology optimization, simply applications topology optimization. It's in beta right now. Um, Creo 5 M10 will be a, the release version. You set up your loads of constraints and it's also using H elements here. When I click on mesh here, you'll see it's not using the the Creo simulate elements, the polynomial elements. It's using true H elements here. Okay, so that's the elements. You can change the, the quality if you want to, but that's pretty much fine the way it's set up here for us. Um, so let's just erase that so we can see it a little better. And what you're going to do is set up um, uh, I think it's a nice idea to set up a volume region first. Here I have a, a volume region where I'm saying everything that's uh, magenta colored can be, uh, elements can be removed from that area, but everything inside the gray can't. Okay. That's a good idea to do that, to, to you know, not give it full freedom to reduce elements everywhere. So, once you have your volume region, then you can go ahead and set up your topology objects. And this is pretty simple. And you'll notice in the videos that you'll watch on YouTube and, and VR&D's website, it's gonna use the same type of questions and the same type of uh, techniques here. First is a topology region definition. And I'm gonna let the topology region be that volume, okay? You also have the option to use fabrication constraints, up to three of them. You can define a mirror constraint, a fill, direction, uh, cyclic condition, radial. Those are all possible options. I, I chose none in this case. I left the rest as defaults. And again, all these options are uh, very thoroughly explained in the on the PTC help section. Next is a design objective. Most typically you're gonna use strain or stress. I'm gonna use uh, strain energy in this case. Okay, hit okay to there. And then lastly, we're going to use this design constraint. And we're gonna use a mass fraction, and I'm gonna give it an upper bound of 0.15. I 
I also define this in the first topology region, I, I defined a, a mass fraction of 0.15 there too, which really just says that I'm okay with 85% of the elements going away. Okay, that's my, that's my uh, preference. And that's it. You click on the go button, it runs for about this, in this case, about 20 minutes on my machine. And then I, after it's done, I have the option of, of showing the results or also using this option here called Propagate Geometry. And what Propagate Geometry does is it converts that faceted data into a freestyle feature, which let's go ahead and show you what that looks like right here. And you'll see it's um, it ended up with something like this first. Okay, Notice it, it had some extra little outliers that I went ahead and, and, um, and fixed with the freestyle feature. That's why it's called uh, semi-automatic. Okay, so it, it goes to the freestyle feature and then I went in, the, in there and just edited the the freestyle feature, which is no no big deal. I just went ahead and deleted some some, some surfaces and I connected, connected them back together. Um, and you can go ahead and, and, and edit this this uh, this freestyle feature. I also believe I, I made this area thicker. Okay, so you can then take it and use a freestyle feature of just pulling and tugging edges, points, and surfaces around. And then you end up taking this into simulate then. And then I went ahead and looked at results. I had the same load, same type of uh, uh, constraints. Let's just look at stress and something like this. And here we have our final result, uh, deformed result. So, that's fantastic. Taking it from a optimized model and converting it to geometry semi-automatically, you know, 90% of the way, almost 100% of the way sometimes, um, is really a differentiator. So if you want to see this from EAC, go ahead and contact your salesperson, and we'd love to come out and, and show you more about this. Thank you. I hope you liked what you just saw. We're pretty excited about the technology. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit subscribe and give us a like. If you have any comments or questions, drop them down in the comments section below. Talk to you soon.